Now, it's said we're a nation of cures, no problem lining up and patiently waiting our turn. But actually, that's not just a fluke. There's science to a good cue. Now, one man originally from the Kendall area is proof of that. Uh, Professor Keith Still is a crowd scientist. And he played a key role managing the mammoth queue through London as people gathered to pay their respects to the late Queen. It's one of many significant events Professor Still has helped plan, assessing how to keep people safe in some of the largest queues and crowds in the world. Fiona Marley Patterson has been speaking to him. Professor Keith Still has studied how people behave in a crowd for 30 years, inspired by Hillsborough. I couldn't understand from a, a physics operational point of view why they thought crowds would move like a fluid. Consider grains of sand in an egg timer, the fastest flow is down the middle. But crowds move faster around the edges. So there's a chain reaction from an initial miscalculation. He learned how to influence a crowd's behaviour from his granduncle, a magician. He would make you focus on something here while he pulls the rabbit out of his hat. I don't look at how people might react. I look at what do we need to put in place that they will do the right things. So for instance, in uh, amusement parks, if I know that it's going to take 45 minutes from this point and I say to the kids, are we prepared to stand around for three quarters of an hour? And they say yes, then we've committed to that. And so long as it takes 45 minutes or less, then our expectations be managed. But if it takes 46 minutes, I start to look at my watch. So the mood changes. He applied the same science to Operation Feather. 250,000 people queuing for five miles to pay their respects to the late Queen in London. Keith was part of the planning in 2013. So this is a contemplative crowd. They have a shared emotion and therefore by keeping them informed, we're keeping them very coherent and building and developing a sense of community within that environment. So uh, this type of queue was moving quite consistently. So this is one of the issues is that you didn't have a lot of rests. It was a, a constantly moving entity. And again, all of that was based on the fact that if you knew what the bottleneck was at Westminster Hall, if you knew what the throughput was, you balance everything to that. Looking after the welfare of everybody in that queue, making sure that, that that last stage, that people didn't push themselves beyond the limits, that there was a significant welfare uh, and stewarding and ticketing system in place so that they had the wristbands when they joined the queue. So everybody knew the order. Uh, everybody was going to be in a shared experience. So the psychology of this is also an important thing to understand when you do queuing designs. We've got digital queuing systems now. You get them for a lot of music festivals. Why not do it digitally? So if I turn up five minutes later and miss my slot, now I've got chaos. Uh, the simplest possible mechanism is first come, first served, issued with a wristband, and you keep your place in the line. Masterminding a very British queue on a massive scale, carefully crafted to keep a quarter of a million people safe. Fiona Namali patterson ITV News. Interesting. I think you learn something new every day. Yeah, very much so. Very interesting, that, wasn't it?